All right, thank you, Nathan. Arkansas has had 5,612 known cases of COVID-19 so far. 154 new ones reported today. And while it's nothing like what we saw yesterday, today's case count is still one of the higher ones we've seen. It keeps our 14-day trend line on an upward climb. The state now registers its highest number of active cases so far, 1,470 of them. And that's even more than we had during the Cummins unit epidemic back in April. There have also been three new deaths, but more people were released from hospitals than admitted to them for a net decrease of five. There have also been 114 new recoveries, and that is a typical number for the month of May. The ongoing rise in cases has taken phase two reopening off the table for now, but more than 8,000 businesses will receive money from the state in the coming days to help them reopen and offset the impacts of COVID-19. TSV 11's Melissa Zigowitz spoke with local business owners here in Little Rock about what this grant means for their business. I just got approval of that, and I believe the money will be deposited in the next few days. Shelly Green owns the Green Corner Store in Soma. She is one of more than 8,000 business owners who applied for the Arkansas Ready for Business grant. It's going to help tremendously. There's a lot of extra expenses that we are just now beginning to realize exactly how much it's going to cost us to reopen. It will help owners like Green pay for PPE and the equipment they need to keep their shops clean. Such as hand sanitizer and extra cleaning signs and directionals to let people know so that they can social distance. The need for these supplies is not short term and will add up as this pandemic stretches on. This grant will allow us to be able to replenish what we're spending for these things through the end of the year. The focus is really on uh, letting businesses reopen in a safe manner. Jack Sundell, owner of the Rue Cafe and Mockingbird, considers this grant a lifeline. Sundell decided not to reopen his dining rooms for the time being. Just not sure that, that we were ready to put our staff in that situation. Even though he's sticking to curbside pickup, there's still a lot of expenses this grant will help with. You know, sales are at best about half of what they were when we were open. Um, so it's a, a real struggle to uh, be able to maintain inventory in that situation. Both Green and Sundell are grateful the governor is keeping small businesses in mind like them. Because you want to do the right thing and you don't and you want to do everything the very best that you can. Um, so I'm really pleased to be able to have that. In Little Rock, Melissa Zigowitz, THV 11 News. And Governor Asa Hutchinson says some businesses receive that money today while the rest will have it deposited over the weekend. And Governor Hutchinson says the website for the Pandemic Unemployment Assistance Program is up and running. And dozens of state employees will be working through the weekend to get gig workers, self-employed, and other PUA recipients their checks. It follows the data insecurity revealed earlier this week. And the governor says it's been patched up. A U of A graduate is in serious federal trouble after the FDA says he sold a black market COVID vaccine in Seattle. The agency warns Desarc native Johnny Stein to immediately stop marketing a $400 injection that has not been approved or even tested. One night in March, he said he had already injected 12 people and had 12 more to go. He has not publicly offered the bootleg injection since late April when Washington state officials ordered him to stop. The coronavirus is taking a staggering toll on Arkansas nursing homes. 35% of reported deaths from COVID-19 complications are nursing home residents. And they are our most frail, most vulnerable and beloved group of people. Tonight, Dawn Scott got an in-depth exclusive look at Briarwood, the first facility under attack, which is now COVID free. Bye. Love you. 99 year old Evelyn Rand lives at Briarwood Nursing and Rehab. Her family visited as often as they could. But March 12th, the home went on lockdown as fears of COVID-19 ramped up. In an exclusive telephone interview with top administrator Joan Robbins, we learned that even though the facility had been preparing for weeks, the virus's arrival was like nothing they've seen. We were expecting it. We just didn't expect it at Briarwood. When you're the first one, when you're the guinea pig, 
you know, everybody just has to figure it out together. It began mid-March. A male resident had been taken to the hospital a few days earlier for something unrelated to COVID. He was released home to Briarwood on March 17th. The next morning, the phone rang. The hospital called to tell me, oh, we tested this resident for COVID while they were here and they're positive. Facility Medical Director Dr. Bushra Shah likened it to war. And once we were made aware, of course, everything um, was a different ballgame. It was like a personal, um, you know, we've been attacked by corona. This was a war that we're going to win. And, uh, you know, whatever it took. Pictures the home shared with THV 11 show staff on the front lines working tirelessly to comfort residents whether we had to hand feed them, whether, you know, uh, we had to massage them, whether we had to, you know, just some of them were anxious and just wanted company. All the while, the home, which had been stocking up on PPE, lacked tests for all 98 of its residents. There were no tests. That was the problem. There were no tests anywhere. The health department initially secured 13 tests for the facility. And we chose the 13 most frail residents. But it took nearly a week to secure enough for all residents and staff to be tested. The owner even driving out of state to buy tests. And then residents began to die. The first 83-year-old Alice Jett, she died March 30th. Her family sharing with me she spent her life as a 911 supervisor for the city of Little Rock, adored by her colleagues. Frances Jansen died April 1st, a beloved mother, grandmother, who was once a big band singer. And then Evelyn Rand tested positive, her family unable to be by her side. Yeah, my mom's in Little Rock, so I think for her it's been the hardest thing because she hasn't been able to see her. Um, sorry. For two months not to see their loved one, every night I would cry that no one else would die. Joan said, I'd rather die than lose any of my residents. All told, five residents died. A lot of people saying, oh, it's no big deal. It's like the flu. Well, it's worse than anybody I've seen die from the flu. Rand was one of a total of 42 positive COVID-19 patients of the 98 residents. And outside the home, the community came calling. The community stepped up like something you've never seen in your life. We had signs out here, people knocking on the door and singing to us, and people drawing stuff out there for us. I, I don't know if we would have made it as well as we did. Robbins attributes that to community support and to her staff. These girls were willing to work any amount of shifts we wanted. They didn't know anything about getting all these bonuses and stuff from the government. They didn't ask for anything extra. They didn't want anything extra. Fast forward to today to good news. We are COVID free as a facility. I have a 99 year old and I told her you beat Corona and she said You know, she said, how about that? And another 99-year-old, Evelyn Rand, fought off the virus, testing negative just a few weeks ago. Her family preparing for a big celebration this summer. Celebrating her 100th in July. We cannot wait for that day that we can hug her again. When that call came back on March 18th that the male patient tested positive, no one knew what to do. Initially, the hospital said they would send an ambulance for him, and then the nursing home thought he should stay. He was ultimately hospitalized for a few days, but since he was asymptomatic, went back home to Briarwood. And all of that underscores the fact that no matter how much they tried to prepare, nothing could stand in the way of COVID-19's devastation. The coronavirus cast clouds over this Memorial Day after so many weeks of staying indoors. The so-called quarantine fatigue setting in with some people itching to get out and maybe even travel. But as Michael George explains, officials are urging people to be careful, especially about pandemic hotspots. New Orleans, which has been hard hit by the coronavirus, is hoping to kick off the holiday weekend on a high note. I think people are going to rally and I think I think we're going to be surprised at how many people are going to show up. At Washington, D.C.'s National Mall and Memorial Parks, one-way directional signs will help direct traffic to encourage social distancing. In the event that we have too many people at one of the memorials, uh, we will be uh, able to fairly quickly and fairly easily temporarily close 
access to those memorials, let the crowds thin out. In the Black Hills of South Dakota, Mount Rushmore is opening on Saturday, about three weeks earlier than planned. Sunbathing is still off limits at Los Angeles County's reopened beaches, but officials are easing restrictions on bike paths. Cities like South Lake Tahoe are asking visitors to stay away altogether. We really want people to enjoy their Memorial Day weekend at their home, where they live, with their families. Uh, not in Tahoe this time. On the East Coast, Landon Gurkink is driving to North Carolina's Outer Banks. I think we don't really know what to expect. If the beaches are packed, it's about being smart. You can still social distance while on the beach. New York City's Coney Island Beach and Boardwalk will be open, but swimming is not allowed. If you want to go back to those things we love, you cannot let your guard down. And to pave the way for socially distanced pedestrians, 13 more miles of city streets will be closed to cars this holiday weekend. Michael George, CBS News, New York. For the first time in 20 years, AAA did not offer its Memorial Day travel forecast. It predicts even lower travel numbers than during the Great Recession. Besides, Memorial Day isn't really about hamburgers or swimming pools or parties. It's about the heroes who battled fiercely for the sake of our union. Their honor is something the virus can never take away. And on that note, we'll be right back with your Memorial Weekend forecast.